Hello everybody, welcome to KGSIS, the most trusted learning platform in India. I am Manoj Jaiswal, your public administration mentor. And in this class, as you know, there is routine also public administration syllabus analysis. So we are going to analyze the syllabus of public administration. As I have told several times that in public administration or even in any subject, there are several things which can be understood or which can be said as the undercurrents in the syllabus. Every syllabus, every even GS, polity, ethics, optionals, any optional, every subject syllabus has some undercurrents. And until unless we are not able to understand those undercurrents which are in the syllabus, we cannot understand questions well. And therefore, if the undercurrents of the syllabus is not known to us, then what will happen? We will not be able to understand the nature of the question and the demand of the question. That is why this analysis of the syllabus is very much required. As you know, there are two papers in public administration. And in paper one, there are 12 units. The unit one is introduction, second is administrative thought, third is administrative behavior, fourth is organizations, fifth is accountability and control, sixth is administrative law, seventh is comparative public administration, eighth is development administration or changing profile of development dynamics. Thereafter, personnel administration, public policy, techniques of administrative improvement and financial administration, the 12th unit. So these 12 units are in paper one, but when we see the syllabus of this paper one only, then we get several things which are interrelated with each other. Several topics are interrelated. Introduction, thought, behavior, okay, and we will discuss later how they are interrelated. Similarly, we will also try to find out the interrelations between the units of paper 1 and moreover the topics of paper 1 and paper 2 in this class. Okay, so in paper 1 these 12 units and in paper 2 there are 14 units we will see later. See, the unit 1 is of introduction and you can see here in the <coughs> in this unit meaning scope and significance of public administration thereafter there is then and there after the meaning scope and significance of public administration there is another topic which is wilson's vision on on public administration okay what wilson wilson means the scholar woodrow wilson who has became the president of united state of america also so why in the introduction of public administration as a discipline, Wilson's vision and public administration is given in the syllabus. The reason is very simple. And you might be knowing also that it was Woodrow Wilson who has written a paper essay in 1887, an introduction to the study of administration, 1887. So it is supposed, or you can say it is a well accepted fact by the several later scholars that it was Woodrow Wilson who has initiated the separate study of public administration or who had made a call for the separate study of public administration. So, if we see or if we will be trying to understand the meaning, scope and significance of public administration, Wilson's ideas shall also become very much important. Similarly, next topic is evolution of the discipline and its present status. Means the evolution of public administration as a discipline and its present status. So, again there will be the need to discuss Wilsonian idea. Beyond that or without the Wilson's idea, we cannot understand the evolution and in the evolution there are several phases 
which are related later on with other subjects, other topics also we will discuss. Just few moments after, later. Thereafter, you see new public administration here. Thereafter, public choice approach. Thereafter, challenges of liberalization, privatization, globalization, good governance, new public management. All these topics actually are interrelated. In fact, they are so much intermingled that we need to segregate them very wisely, very precisely and very consciously. We will discuss these things also when we will be discussing topics one by one in our classes. But today also, I will show you some interrelations, how they are interrelated. The next unit is administrative thought see administrative thought or you can say this was all, uh, earlier in this unit was uh, mentioned as thinkers so now it is given as thought so we should be very precise like see here there is some names like uh, classical in the classical theory Weber's bureaucratic model and its critique post Weberian development Human Relations School and Tel Mayo. Thereafter, functions of the executive Chester Bernard. Decision making theory, Herbert Simon. Participative management by Linsel Slicker, Douglas McGregor, Chris Argeris. So, actually, they are very much interrelated. And when you will study the evolution of public administration in that particular discussion, if all these thoughts will be interrelated and interconnected, then your understanding on the syllabus shall be very good. And I will give another lecture also, in which I will tell you people how to prepare thinkers. But if I ask a question to you people, what is the relation or the difference between thinkers and thought? as it is given here, thought, administrative thought. So, every thinker thinks. So, what he or she thinks is that thought. But you can say very simply, what idea or ideology has been given by any particular scholar or thinker is the thought. It also means that, suppose, you are going to study here scientific management and scientific management movement. So, when you are going to study scientific management and scientific management movement, then you must be knowing who has given this scientific management. Then you might be knowing Frederick Winslow Taylor. And if the idea was given by Frederick Winslow Taylor, so what was his thought? Almost whole India knows that he was having a thought about the individual human being that every individual is a cog in the production. Machinistic idea. So, what will be there? In the scientific management thought, what will be prevailing? The machinistic idea about the human being. It means that human being working in any organization is nothing but, uh, but an instrument of production. If he is producing good, he is good. If he is not producing good, he is not good. He is not beneficial for the organization. Machine-like individuals. Similarly, on the lines of scientific management theory, Later on, classical scholars came, they have given certain principles and said that these principles are universally applicable anywhere these principles can be applied and when these principles shall be applied, they will give the desired result, maximization of production, etc, etc. But later on, when human relationist came, means Elton Mayo and some other scholars came, they said that it is not true. No, in the, no, any individual is an instrument of production. Production depends on several other factors, which are basically the social factors. So, what 
So in this sense, if you will make the difference between the classical theory, scientific management theory and human relation school of thought or human relation theory, then you have to relate also. You have to try to find out the comparisons also. It means, and we will study the thought, thinking, idea, ideology, then and that moment, we have to keep in our mind that there is a link between all these. And I'll show you the link in the separate class of that, how to prepare thinkers very easily, most easiest manner. I'll show, I'll tell you in that class. Now, the administrative behavior, process and techniques of decision making, communication, morale, motivation, theories of the motivation, content theories, process theories, contemporary theories, theories of leadership, traditional and modern, both type of. So when we study thought, so in the thought we find that or we get that there are several principles given by the scholars on the basis of that they have given the idea that organization should run or should be done. But how the behavior of individual affects the organization and how organization affects the individual behavior, it was not understood by them. That is why there is communication, decision making means administrative behavior unit. So if the undercurrents you want to find out then you have to go with the fact that the thought section paper unit 2 the thought section of this paper 1 means unit 2 and the behavior section of unit 3 both are actually interrelated and thereafter next unit is organizations in the unit of organizations, on what basis organizations should be constructed, structured. So there are system approach, contingency approach, thereafter other, other ministries, departments, corporations, companies, boards, commissions, these are the types of organizations. But every particular kind or type of organization has some specification Okay, either they are structured on the basis of system theory or on the basis of contingency theory. So, on the basis of theories, which organization is formed in which manner, we have to understand that. What actually students lack in their study of organizations unit? They think that system approach and contingency approach of organization is something different and other ministries, departments, corporations, companies, boards, ad hoc and advisory bodies, headquarters, field relations, they are some completely different. No, there is also an undercurrent means they are also interrelated with each other. In the classes, I will make sure that you will not lose that thread to connect these things which are actually undercurrent. Okay, so next unit is accountability and control. This is very important unit of public administration paper. Why? Why? The reason is, be, be, reason is that it has a very great impact or you, you can say importance with respect to the topic of governance of Indian polity as well as if you see concept of accountability and control, legislative control, executive control, judicial control over administration, citizen and administration, role of media, voluntary groups, civil society, citizen charter, information, right to information, social audit. So you can see actually these all are very much important topics of general studies paper too. For, for that purpose, it is so important that you can't Imagine, if this topic is well prepared, 
then there will not be any problem in those areas of the thalamus of Indian polity and governance paper 2 of GS. Similarly, if you see the topics here, legislative control, executive control, judicial control over administration, citizen and administration, it means that these are also very much significant. Sorry. For which topic? For paper 2, union government, state governments, because there also you study legislature, executive and judiciary. And here in the accountability and control, how the legislature controls administration, how executive controls administration, how judiciary controls administration, how citizen controls administration, these topics are given. Remember, this is a very, very important unit of paper 1 with respect to union and state government of paper 2 also. Union government and state government. For both the topics or units, this is very important. Further, the sixth unit is administrative law. Under the administrative law, there is meaning, scope, significance, and Dicey's views on administrative law. And remember that when you study rule of law, that, hey, do can you recall a rule of law of Dicey? So Dicey was actually against the administrative law. He never favored administrative law. That is why you can say the concept of rule of law which was given by A.V. Dicey was against the administrative law or you can say is against the administrative law. So you can say that. So in this topic, when you will study Dicey's views on administrative law, administrative law at that uh, discussion, in that discussion actually you have to discuss very clearly the rule of uh, law also. Is that clear? I hope you might be understanding well. Delegated legislation is also a very important topic. Why? Actually, delegated legislation means what? The legislation is the responsibility of parliament or the state legislatures. But as we know that the parliamentarians are not experts in law. So when any act is passed by the parliament, that is actually bill is passed as an act by the parliament or state legislature then at that uh, uh, moment that bill which becomes an act actually does not involves the details of the particular law or the particular act so the parliament authorizes the executive to make the details of that law and this phenomena is called as delegated legislation. Means what? The parliament has, what parliament has done? Parliament has delegated, means assigned its task to the executive. And the executives in the parliamentary form of government are actually the subordinates of the parliament. That is why it is also called as subordinate legislation. A subordinate body is doing the task which was actually the task of the parliament. Okay, now administrative tribunals actually they are the byproduct of the concept of administrative law. Actually, the concept of administrative law was developed in France and it was initiated by Napoleon Bonaparte. What is there? I am just giving a glimpse to you. In France, there is a system of dual law. Means, there is administrative law for the settlement of, for the settlement of administrative grievances, while for the civil grievances or the grievances of the normal and ordinary person, there is 
ordinary law and ordinary courts. So, two type of law governs the society in France. Ordinary as well as administrative law. Administrative law is actually called in French there Driet Administrative. Driet Administrative. Why I am discussing it more? The very simple reason is that this topic, administrative law, has a very much relevance with respect to the concept of rule of law. So, Driet Administrative is called as administrative law. So, administrative disputes or grievances are settled by the administrative courts separately and normal or ordinary matters and ordinary issues are, or grievances are heard and decided by the ordinary court. But this IC under the concept of rule of law has given that there shall be an ordinary court of law and there was any violation of law or not shall be decided by the ordinary court in an ordinary manner. That's why DIC was against the administrative law. So, actually, DIC on administrative law has undercurrent. What is here as, an, as the undercurrent? The concept of rule of law of DIC, which is actually contradictory to the administrative law. DIC was in favor of single law, while in France there is dual law. This is the difference we will discuss when we will discuss the topic in detail in our classes. Here, my only purpose is to show you the undercurrents. That's why you can understand well the syllabus. Thereafter, comparative public administration. Under this, historical and sociological factors affecting administrative system. So, when you see this uh, historical and sociological factors affecting administrative system, you should think. Why historical and sociological factors? Then if you will be knowing well the evolution of the discipline in the very beginning of the class, then you will think, okay, public administration as a discipline originated in West. And what the Western scholars has given as they are you know, claiming that they, they, they are giving the universal principles and can be applied universally. But they would either they would not have been very relevant for some countries or some ad, administrative systems or they would have been found unsuccessful in some administrative systems. That is why historical and sociological factors became important to be considered and when historical and sociological factors became important to be understood and to be studied. The very simple manner or way out is to compare, compare the West from the East. So, history and sociology of the East is different. You know, obviously. So, what the historical perspective is of India? was not of USA, was not of Britain, what the sociological structure and functioning, social structure and functioning, functioning is in India, is not in Britain, is not in USA, is not in France. So, comparative public administration becomes the only way out to find out the differences in the historical and sociological aspects of the countries and that, uh, that is why you are seeing the further topics, administration and politics in different countries. So, as there will be social factor and historical factors that will influence the administration and politics in the countries. That is why Comparative study became very much important and in the comparative study there is and was the only famous and popular name and which is F.W. Briggs. 
the ecological perspective was taken by Mr. Ricks in the study of the developing countries, especially the developing countries. And when, by the comparative study, F.W. Riggs emphasized on the study of developing countries and their administration. The developing countries were developing. That's why another aspect of public administration became prominent, dominant, or you can say a new way or a new, <coughs> sorry, a new way or a new way of thinking was started with respect to the administration. And that is how or what kind of administration can work well for the developing countries. It was somehow suggested by Riggs and there were some other scholars, there are some other scholars also like uh, Edward Wiedener. So, development administration as a unit and as a study of public administration also became popular. So, changing profile of development or you can say the development dynamics is another unit. And the first topic is concept of development. Thereafter, changing profile of development administration. How? the development administration changed. So actually, if we talk only with respect to Indian system, then we get that up to 70s, there was the very much emphasis on the top-down model of development, which was advocated by Nehru and Mahalanobis. You also know the Nehru Mahalanobis era, yeah, Mahalanobis era, the planned development, but you know that up to 70s it was found, or you can say in the late 70s in India, in the mid 70s, 70s in India, it was found that that approach is not very much helping the people who are downtrodden, who are vulnerable class. So, against that top down model, and other idea or ideology or concept was given, which is called as anti-development thesis. So, anti-development thesis means not the anti-development exactly. It means an idea which is anti to the development thesis, which was already there or which was being run or operationalized by the countries of the world and that was top-down model. Then how bureaucracy can play or how bureaucracy plays a significant role in the development of so bureaucracy and development. Here one thing must always be remembered that Bureaucracy is called as not only the instrument of the governance system, but the drivers of the development. So what is the relationship between the development and bureaucracy? How bureaucracy is catering the issues of the development as well as in what manner bureaucracy has become sometimes or many of the times hurdle also in the process of development that should also be understood here and you know when the development profile changed so when liberalization was advocated and you can say that the countries like india also adopt, adopted the liberalization then what happens private sector has been see i am going to show you the undercurrents why the topic is given here A strong state versus market debate why this topic is here? The reason is after the liberalization, after the liberalization, what happened? After the liberalization, private sector was advocated and even since then it is being advocated. So, if the private sector will become more powerful than the state, means the market will become more powerful than the state, then shall it be beneficial for the society? as well as 
is it possible to have a stronger market than the state? So simply you can say, no sir, it is not possible. No state can be a weaker state or no market can become the more stronger than the state. But this topic is given here under the development dynamics. The reason is liberalization and through liberalization opening the market for all which is a buzzword now and which became a buzzword since 90s in India also. And that is why you see the next topic is given here impact of liberalization on, <coughs> on administration in developing countries. You see what I have told you is further given in an other manner. Thereafter in the process of development you see in the paper too social justice area SHG here it is given self-help group movement women and development and under the women and development which topic is important self-help group so if you prepare public ads and you can see that paper 2 is almost being covered more or less except the IR everything is there in the public administration units or topics unit 9 personal administration so personal administration means the implies personal so initially just think here if you are going to study personal administration then do you recall what was the idea of the Frederick Winslow Taylor about the employees working or the workers working in the organization? Is there a, was there any idea with respect to the human resource development? So you can say, sir, oh, no, 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 there was nothing like that, sir. But I will show you there was also an element of human resource development inherent in Frederick Winslow Taylor also. Thereafter, was there any uh, idea with respect to human resource development in classicals, in human relations, in behavioralist, in post behavioralist? So what? You should not study personal administration only as a unit number 9 of public administration paper 1. But you should study this public administration paper 1 topic unit number 9 by relating with the thoughts also. So, if you will do so, then you will answer the questions quickly. You will understand the nature of the question. You will never face any problem. Thereafter, training, career advancement, position classification, discipline, performance appraisal, promotion, pay and service conditions. Okay, etc. etc. So pay, not pay, pay and service conditions. Okay. Employer employee relations, grievance relation mechanism, code of conduct, etc. Jitne bit all the topics, administrative ethics. See, administrative ethics is a very smaller topic. Here is given under personal administration. But you know, it covers each and everything. You can say probity in governance and ethics in civil services. So ethics in public service or ethics in civil services is dealt by this only topic. So what do you see in details in paper 4 ethics uh, paper is here one topic only. This is what the public administration has in it for you very important you know very important for your entire examination always remember that after public policy models of public policy making and their critique processes and conceptualization planning implementation monitoring limitations state theories and public policy formulations all these topics of public policy are very much important again for your paper 2 gs also but here when you will study public policy so, plans and priorities of paper 2 shall be taken into consideration. I will discuss later how the topics shall be understood and shall be studied with comparing each other. Okay, we will see that. There are the techniques of administrative improvement 
and here you see e governance and there is e governance in the governance you per topic of paper to gs okay but remember e governance is only a technique of administrative improvement or you can say one of the techniques of administrative improvement okay so e governance is also a very important topic here in personal administration similarly it is very important in your paper 2 further <coughs> the 12th unit of paper 1 is financial administration here monetary and fiscal policies public borrowing public debt budget types you know, all these sorry all these topics are actually very much related with your budget economy indian economy okay in indian economy you see monetary and fiscal policy public borrowings debt budget types of budgets budgetary process financial accountability accounts and audit cag and all you have that thereafter the units of paper 2 evolution of indian administration thereafter philosophical and constitutional framework of government government of what government of india so when we see philosophical and constitutional framework of government of india we can think what shall be here who gives the philosophy for the government only the constitution but apart from the constitution there are several other things but the most important one is constitution that is why here it is written philosophical and constitutional framework of government thereafter public sector undertakings we know that psus were very large in india now they are less in number Union government and administration, plans and priorities, state government and administration, district administration, civil services, financial management, administrative reforms since independence, rural development, urban development, law and order administration, and the 14th unit is significant issues in Indian administration. So, these 14 topics are also similarly and equally important for your selection. The in your evolution of Indian administration starts with Kautilya, then Mughal, then British. And in the Mughal and British period, what kind of civil services were there? Revenue administration was the, of which nature? District administration was of which nature? And how the public services were Indianized in India? Because public services means ICS. It was originated. It was originated by the Britishers. Or you can say initiated, created by the Britishers. So, how that service was Indianized, that is the topic. We will see them also. So, in Indian administration, what Kautilya's ideas were there, what Britishers did in their, uh, <coughs> sorry, in their period of ruling in India, how that has impacted the constitution of India, how that impacted the social and economic structure of India, we must understand. That is why in the very next philosophical and constitutional framework of a government here, salient features are and value premises, which, which are covering the idea of constitutionalism, political culture, bureaucracy and democracy, and bureaucracy and development again here in paper 2, unit 2. And you have studied bureaucracy and development in the development dynamics also. So, what you have to do? The interrelation, I am just mentioning, you have to mention in your notebook also that the, this topic is also completely related with the bureaucracy and development which is given in the unit of development dynamics of paper one clear constitutionalism political culture bureaucracy and democracy yes these all are the topics which are equally important we will discuss thereafter public sector undertakings in this this liberalization and privatization impact is actually of immense importance public sector in modern india forms of public sector undertakings problems of autonomy accountability 
and control. But as we know that the present, presently the government is not willing to establish any new PSU, but this investment and privatization is, is still going on. So, what kind of impact will be on the society, social structure, economy? These are the very important areas which has to be understood in the study of public sector undertaking. Not only the topics, but undercurrents as Okay. Thereafter, union government, you know, almost all the things executive parliament judiciary structure and forms work process of judiciary executive and parliament what are the recent trends in all these three organs of the government intergovernmental relations what kind of intra-governmental relations are there and cabinet secretariat pmo ministries and departments attached offices field offices it's all boards and commissions all are all were somehow there in the organizations also at least Sorry, at least commissions, boards, attached offices, field organizations, these are directly related to the topics given in the organizations. Remember, organizations. If you will remember these things, you will not need to study it repeatedly. Only some points you have to in, uh, include. With respect to India, with respect to India, with respect to India. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now, plans and priorities, you know, machinery of planning. Now, the Niti Ayog has become very much important because the planning commission has been replaced by the Niti Ayog. <coughs> Thereafter, NDC, formulation of plans, constitutional uh, <coughs> amendments, and decentralized planning for economic development. Uh, means the 73rd and 74th amendment and what impact was made by the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment with respect to the development dynamics or you can say plans and on plans and priorities of the governments in India. Okay. Thereafter, you see the state government and administration simple hai. simply there is also all the things are known to you. You study in the Indian polity, but you do not study chief secretary, state secretariat, and directories. Only these are the new topic for you. If you see the polity paper or the paper two paper, or you can say if you complete the union uh, and state government, you complete the polity section also. Thereafter, district administration. Changing role of collector. Actually, the role of collector was kind of my bab during the British rule in India. And after that, also several years, the tendency of being owner and commanding nature was not changed. But now the role of collector is being changed very drastically. Drastically. The role of district collector was in the law and order also. In the management of development also now gradually the role of the district collector is being reduced as you know that where there is the commissionerate system police commissioner the maintenance of land order is not the responsibility of the district collectors in those districts that that responsibility is completely vested in the police commissioner so in the commissioner system they are flat. so we will discuss all these things in this unit civil services and this civil services is actually more or less dependent on the constitutional status or the position there are several provisions made in the constitution of india but after that structure recruitment capacity building good governance initiative code of conduct staff associations, political rights, defense judicial mechanism, civil service neutrality and civil service activism. And you might be knowing that civil service activism is nothing but the role played, assertive role played by the civil servants. And civil service activism also includes the whistleblowers. We will discuss this also. So, what is under current under this uh, civil service activism? The whistleblowers. Okay. So, 
this is also taught into loan financial management this complete financial management with nine unit is actually interrelated with the financial administration of paper one here we will see budget as a political instrument parliamentary control over public action the role of finance ministry in the monetary and fiscal area accounting techniques audit and audit role of the cag and auditor general so this uh, accountant general of india controller general of accounts and controller and auditor general of india these simple topics interrelated with the financial administration of paper one also now another unit is administrative reforms since independence this is very very factual but uh, you have to study first uh, administrative reform commission and second administrative reform commissions especially in the areas of uh, financial management and uh, human resource development so you have to study here first arc as well as second arc we will do a very good effort we will make a very good effort with respect to the arcs also most of the students do not go for that that's why what i do i used to take classes on them rural development 73rd and 74th amendment what happened with the 74th amendment for the urban areas and what happened after the 73rd constitutional amendment in the rural areas as well as what are the problems which are being faced by the people residing in the rural areas and urban areas each and everything has to be understood as well as what are the challenges and problems being faced by the rural means pris panchayati raj institutions as well as urban local bodies like municipalities and other okay so thereafter the major challenge in india is of law and order and the major challenge i am saying you the reason because of that the law and order is a state subject but most of the problems in several states in india are being dealt with the help of the central forces and the central government that is why there is given the topic role of central and state agencies including paramilitary forces in the maintenance of law and order and counter insurgency and terrorism okay so this uh, is a very very important topic for you not only for public administration for, for but for also for internal security always remember please do not forget okay next one is and the last one is significant issues in indian administration so regulatory commissions like uh, national highway authority of india insurance regulatory and development authority airport authority of india these are the regulatory commissions values in public services what kind of values should be there and wh what kind of values were left by them why there is the value crisis in civil service or public service all these issues are to be discussed in the values in public service division administration interface corruption and administration disaster management these are very uh, human rights these are the significant issues as considered by the upsc is given in paper 2 okay now finally we are approaching to the topics or units of paper 1 which are interrelated with each other so always remember this introduction topic as i have told you first thing all the topics I'm, I'm just going to write all the topics all the topics of the introduction are linked with each other with each other further further 
introduction topic as a whole means all the topics of introduction are linked with each other similarly all the topics same is here all the topics of unit 2 are interrelated and linked with each other as well as there is a interrelation of unit 1 and 2 as well as 3 also okay 3 also 1 2 3 all these units are interrelated thereafter and other another two or you can say there are two more topics units comparative public addition unit 7 why i am telling you Riggsian model and the ecology and administration shall come in 70s. And the 70s was the era when in the public administration, new public administration was advocated. So, in between, if the comparative public administration idea was very, uh, was emphasized very much by the Riggs, then there must be some difference and some interrelations, okay. So, CPA is also related as well as development dynamics. So, what we get of paper 1, unit 1, 2, 3, 7 and 8 are interrelated and linked with each other. Similarly, if we go more forward, then the units of paper 1 and paper 2 which are interrelated with each other. The unit 1 of paper 1. Introduction and all is actually related with unit 3 of paper 2. And unit 5 of paper 1. Unit 5 of paper 1. Okay. Thereafter, Another interrelation. Okay, remember that those three units are interrelated with each other. Now, some other units which are related with each other are unit 10 of paper 1 and plans and priorities of paper 2. Okay, now unit 12 of paper 1 financial administration is related with the financial management of paper 2 and that is unit 9. So, this is also to be considered very important. Further, unit 9 of paper 1 means personal administration is related with the public services and civil services in India. Unit 8 of paper 1. So, this will be our level of understanding of the syllabus and if this will be our level of understanding of syllabus then always remember you will be in a very good position to understand the nature of the questions and the demand of the questions and you will be in the position to write very good answers in the exams kgsis the india's most trusted learning platform is with you and i am manoj jaiswal also with you thanks for watching thanks for watching very patiently thank you thank you very much